Hello everybody, and how are you doing today? Oh, quite in range there. Well, let me ask this way. Hands up all those who are feeling fantastic. <laughs> now hands up all those who are not doing too good. Hmm, not many of you there. Now hands up all those who don't know. Hands up all those who don't care. <laughs> Quite a few of you were in that last category, I noticed. And me? I am doing just great. Thank you for asking. As a matter of fact, I am above the grass, still breathing, and that is always good news. Isn't it? <laughs> now, what is not good news is here we are in the middle of a British summer, and it's cloudy and cold outside. Believe it or not, it's only 13 degrees Celsius. That's 56 Fahrenheit. That's the temperature outside today. And what is the temperature in Italy where my friend Father Ludovic is stationed in the Diocese of Verona? Would you believe it's 34 degrees Celsius there. That's 93 in Fahrenheit. He's melting. And so far, the British government has got everything closed here so he can't pop in to cool down. Oh well, but he will shortly. Sometime in July, I am hoping to have him here so that he can be at the controls. Now, where am I going to today? Well, a YouTuber by the name of Wiga Wikaxono, I hope I pronounced that correctly, he sent me a message and asked, please fly over Indonesia to go from Jakarta to Bali, he asked. Well, I can certainly do that. In fact, I've flown over Indonesia Back in the 60s, I ferried a C-47 down to Australia and I flew over Indonesia. It's probably changed quite a bit since my old days back in the 60s. But anyway, I've got two very good airport sceneries for this. Jakarta um, was made by Binasim. And so I got that one from the One Sim store. And it's a delightful, very detailed, very highly detailed as a matter of fact, airport scenery. So I'll be using that for my departure point. And the Bali scenery, well, that one was actually freeware. I found it online and it was freeware and it's worked very, very well indeed. And you'll get a chance to see both of those when we climb into the cockpit shortly. Now I discovered that Lion Air uh, flies domestically between Jakarta and Bali. So I'm going to be following the Lion Air flight route. And Lion Air flight is JT38. And the, if you want to look this up, you just put in the uh, main letters here, LNI38, and they fly quite regularly between the two points. I also discovered that in Jakarta, uh, Lion Air seems to be based out of Terminal 2, at the section, the E section, there are various things that stick out. If you'll look at the airport scenery, you'll see that. And they advertise 
their passengers will depart from gate E1, E2, E4, E6. Those are the ones I seem to have found on the website. Now, passenger uh, gates do not necessarily match parking stands for aircraft. So we'll be at gate E12 for our departure. That is as close to gate E1 for the passengers. So we're at stand E12 at Jakarta. First of all, of course, we got to, we've got to check the weather. We know what the weather is like here. We know what it's like in Italy. <clears throat> we shan't talk about that. And let's find out what the weather is like in Jakarta at the moment. My suspicion is it's probably a bit muggy because they, after all, they are equatorial. They're right there on the coastline. And uh, as I recall, it's very, very humid there at this time of year. So let's go on and have a look at the weather and then make our uh, flight plan in sim brief. And then we'll go into Navigraph and assemble it all in there before climbing into the cockpit and taking our flight. So are you ready? Let's have a look. Well, here I am on Flight Aware checking on Lion Air Flight 38. And here you can see the letter codes, the LNI 38. And the flight number, of course, is JT38. This one arrived over two days ago at Terminal D in Bali. And it left passenger gate E1, which when it translates, that is E12 for us at Terminal 2. And here's the route that they took. And I'm going to have a look at the cruising altitude. 35,000 feet is the cruising altitude. And this was a Boeing 737-800 just like ours. Now, just to quickly go and show you this. This is Plane Finder and it tracks flights. Here's the airport in Jakarta. And it's just a quick way of finding out which runway is being used right now in real time. This flight, I think, yes, it just departed. And you can see it is departing from the north side runways, which is going to be the one that we will be using. So when we look at Windy, Here's windy.com and you can see the, the wind is coming down in this general direction. And over here it says the wind is from 330 degrees at seven knots. Visibility is 10 kilometers. Clouds are few at 2000 feet. Oh, look at that. There are cumulonimbus in the vicinity, which suggests there's going to be some possible rain or even some lightning. Anyway, it's scattered at 2,000 feet. Temperature is 29 degrees. Q and H is 1009. But it is showing VFR. So let's have a look at the runway. And here's the runways. Um, in all likelihood, we'll be then using seven left, because if you can see here, this is terminal two, and this is the E departure block. And we are going to be located just about here. So that would make it very convenient to just slip out there and get on to seven left, and make our departure. That is my best guess that 
sim brief will give us. Let's have a look now at Bali, our destination. And here you can see the wind is blowing quite steadily. And it says here, wind is 120 degrees at 15 knots. Quite a good strong wind coming there. Visibility is 10 kilometers or more. There's a few clouds at 1,700 feet. Temperature is 28 degrees. Q&H is 1010. So the low pressure is at both airports. Let's have a look at the runways here. Well, there's the runway. So I think best guess is we'll be coming in on that runway in that direction. So that will be runway 09 that we'll be coming in on. But let's have a look at the whole area here and see what the air pressure is. Now this is a pressure chart. And if you can see here, this is Bali right up there. Look at these swirls. These are massive high pressure areas here. And this, oh, that's quite a, excuse me, that is a low pressure area here. And this is a high pressure here. I forgot that in the Southern Hemisphere, the circulation, the rotation of high and low is reversed to that in the Northern Hemisphere. So you can see the pressure is flowing right up the peninsula here. Now that means we'll be likely to be getting some stiff headwinds. All right, let's go now into sim brief. And here we are. We are Ryanair and we are flight 186. We are departing from WIII. We are going to WADD. Ah, and it gives us uh, an, an island not too far away from Bali for our de uh, alternate. We are, there's our airframe and the profile is six. The registration is here. Schedule flight time, it says, is two hours. Now, this is interesting. It's giving us a departure of 25 left, except we just saw that everything was departing on runway nine left. So I'm going to change this to, excuse me, to seven left and then say yes. We'll keep the nine for the arrival. We are passengers four. We are one ton cargo. And now this is the information that we have for our departure. It says CA2A for the SID. And that is going to be the route. This is the route that it's come up with. Hmm. Well, let's put this in and see whether or not we do get seven left or if we have to change it. We'll go up here, we'll click save the flight, close and generate the flight plan. And there it is. It does give us a cruise altitude of 350. No remarks. The block fuel 7,165. Airtime 1 hour 32. And there's the route. Now I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to have a look 
at the at the weather and oh yes look at that there is a frontal movement and we're going to be flying straight through that it's going to be interesting if there are cumulonimbus in the area that could mean that we may have to make some oh, detours for the comfort of our passengers and here's flight level 300, and as you can see, it's headwinds, headwinds, all of it, headwinds. Here's 340, this is closer to the one we'll be flying, and again, it's all headwinds. We're not going to escape from the headwinds. 390, nothing better. And there's our flight profile. Uh, whereas we climb, there's the top of climb, there's our f cruising altitude and our descent into Bali. Okay, that's the information and we'll go up here just to look at the fuel. We've got reserves of 2,138. The trip and the taxi is going to be 4,356 is what they are planning. Right, well, if you're ready, let's go ahead then and have a look at Navigraph and put this into our plan. Well, here we are in Navigraph, and we're showing all the area of the peninsula here. This is where we'll be flying to, right down to here. So let's go ahead, click on flights. We're going to bring in new flight. We're going to bring it from Simbrief, and we're going to use the latest one that we made. And here it is. Now I'm going to click up here, open the charts list, and in taxi, I'm going to bring in the airport. I'm going to bring in the parking stands for the terminal that we'll be using, which is this one. And we will actually be right here, E12 because this is Terminal 2 E. And then for standard departures, let's have a look at this. We'll be using the, use the chart windowed. So we'll be departing and going down this route here. All right, we will add this We'll pin this also, and if I do this, this shows the overlay between the two points, just like that, and going down. Now, let's have a look at the depart at the destination. We'll need the airport. We'll need the gates. We'll be coming in on runway 09, so we'll bring that in. The star is this one, so we'll pin that. And let's have a look at that in the overlay. So here we are coming down T3. And here is interesting. We have to be at or above flight level 150 at KDAL and at or above 5,000 feet at KTAC. And then here, this will be our final approach fix and that will be 3,000 feet. If I bring in the runway 09, This is the overlay. 
Now, I'm going to show you how I join that up. So I'm going to go to Approaches. We are VOR, DME. Click on that and it brings that into a solid line. Here's the information that we need is the ATIS is 126.2. The, there is radar available for vectoring. There's the tower frequency of 118.1. Ground is 118.8. The VOR frequency here is 116.2. And the identifier BLI, and we'll have a closer look at this. Here you can see the identifier in Morse code and we can actually listen to this to verify it when we get close is a dash three dots dot dash dot dot and two dots and if we hear that then we're tuned to the correct one so our final approach course will be 088 and this is the final approach fix altitude that we will need to be at and we can see that down here right here at this particular point that's 5.5 nautical miles from touchdown and minimum descent altitude is also the same as the decision altitude and that is 370 feet or 359 feet above the runway which is 11 feet above sea level so that's the information that we have there. Missed approach, we climb straight ahead at or above 2,000 feet, turn right to intercept the BLI VOR on radial 268. And then we proceed to Kuta at 3,000 feet for holding or as instructed by ATC. So there's our route back, 268. And it is a standard right-hand pattern holding over Kuta at that point. Transition altitude is 11,000 feet. So we'll need to make a note of that. And here's the descent profile. So we'll set our headings for 88 degrees, come down to 2,500. And that will be at 11.3 on the DME then down to 1650 and that will be at that point the final approach fix is at 5.5 nautical miles on the dme meter at 1.5 that's when we make a decision as the missed approach that's the missed approach point so if we have any problems that's where it will be at and the VOR will touch down then at 11 feet above sea level. And there it is. There's all the information that we need for landing. Now looking at the airport at the destination, as you can see, we'll be approaching right above the water. It's saying here that we are 87 degrees but we'll be using 88 because that is what the charts are telling us. Looks like if we make it, we'll be departing the active runway at N3, coming around, and then we will need to find a parking place at the domestic terminal right here. And looking at those gates, then that would be one of these. So anywhere between 24 and 34 is where we'll be at. And this, by the way, is terminal D, I think. I think that's terminal D. Domestic, D for domestic, I suppose that's how they're doing it. Right, so now we have all the information that we need. We have our route, just clean this up. So there's everything 
there's our entire route all the way down from Jakarta to Bali. So if you're ready, then let's go jump in the cockpit and get things programmed. Ah, there you are. Come on in, take your seat, buckle up and let's go to Bali. Here we are. We're in Jakarta at this marvelous bit of scenery done by Binasim and it is very detailed. I am showing frame rates because of the detail. I'm showing frame rates of 30, 31 at the minute. So that's taking quite an impact, but we'll do fine. So if you're ready, let's get ourselves prepared. So, battery on, we have voltage, and let's put on the fuel pumps and start the APU. Now, I did get a question about what this was. And they were saying this is in the position where the compass usually goes, and that is true. But what this is, this is my bank angle switch. Yes, I know it's supposed to be here, but they couldn't put two knobs on this particular MCP. So I left this to be a knob that just changes the heading and redirected all the commands for bank angle to here. It's just a simple switch behind it, a rotary switch. So I can click it as I need to set whatever bank angle that I desire. So. That's all that that is. And I use FSUIPC in order to make the commands work with PMDG. Ah, here we go. We now have 115 volts coming through. So we'll start the rest of the, turn on the IRS to get them aligned. So Cano had our clearance delivery, Orbit 8473, IFR2, who came We'll turn on the galley, turn on the emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. And then over here, the left and the right um, window heat, the probes, I know we should put those on a little bit later, but I put them on early so I don't forget. And then the uh, hydraulic pumps, the lights here saying forward service and equipment, that's the forward hatch. And these are the stairs, the electrical stairs that go out of the side of the aircraft to allow passengers to board. So now we'll turn on the APU bleed and turn on the air conditioning into the main cabin. And there you can hear the rush going through right now. All right, so now we are set. We are at gate E12, not gate, stand E12. The other side of that, the passenger side, is gate E1, but the stand is E12. And we're in the medium aircraft position. Over there, I think E11. Yes, that's over on that side, E11 is for heavy aircraft so that would be the really big ones our passengers will come out of one of these doors and cross over and then mount up on the stairs so let's get the programming put into our fmc so we'll clear the bottom will go position initialization. Our aircraft airport is WIII. And looking at the parking stands, apron E E12 is 673 and 106.39.1 one. 
So that is that. Put that in. We now have our location. Go to the root. So we are W I I I. We're going to go to W A D D. We are flight number R Y R Ryanair 186. I go page down, and here's where we can put in our route directly. And we're following the flight plan on this. So we are direct to CA. And it comes up with a lot of things. And it actually happens to be that one. So we'll put that one in. And then we go T3. And then that will take us to Raybol. R-A-B-O-L. That's it. Activate and push the activation switch. Now we'll go and put in our fix. That's uh, W-A-D-D. -D. And it's four mile circle, 10 mile circle, 30 mile circle, go to descent to the forecast, 200, 150, 100, the Q&H at our destination is 1011, and then the charts show us that it is 5914, For that, 77.9 for flight level 150 and 64.9 for flight level 100 and execute that. Go to departures. Now here's where we need to get our clearance. So let's tune in and get our clearance from the airport. Sir Cardo Hatter, clearance delivery, Ryanair 186, ready to copy IFR clearance to Igustigura Ryan International. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Igustigura Ryan International Airport as final fly runway heading, climb and maintain 11000. Departure frequency is 125.45 squawk 0775. Ryanair 186, clear to Igustigura Ryan National Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 11000. Departure on 125.45 squawk 0775. Ryanair 186, red back correct. Contact ground on 121.6. Right, we'll contact the ground and ask for a taxi and see what runway they give us. Sir Cardo Hatter, ground, Ryanair 186, with Oscar, ready to taxi, IFR. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 25, right, via taxiway, November the bar, whiskey, November the bar, 1, November Charlie 1, November 1, contact tower on 118.2, when ready. Taxi to and hold short, runway 25, right, using taxiway, November Park whiskey, November Park 1, November Charlie 1, November 1, Ryanair 186. Right, we've been given two five rights, and so the SID that we're going to be having to use now is the CA2D. Everyone else in real life is leaving from runway five left and five right, but we are going to be using 25 left or 25 right, so that's how it works. So execute that, go to departure and arrivals, we're going to be coming in on BDM 09. We're going to be using the Rabel 4E and Kuta Transition. All right. So that should bring it all in. So let's have a look and check this to see whether the plan is going to be working. So I'm stepping through it and there's the first discontinuity so we'll put that up and 
and Kedar, and it's straight in. We have a good plan. All right. So we'll turn on now the your damper and push that. Now we'll go in and perform the initialization on the root. We have 7.2 tons of fuel. We have a reserve of 2,138. We have a trip of 4,356, that makes 6,494, or 6.5, 6 6.5, reserves, as I said, was 2.1, let the aircraft calculate, we are index 6, we're flying at flight level 350, our cruise wind is 85.19. Transition altitude, if you remember, is 11,000 feet. Execute that. And one. Oh, we're 28 degrees here. A lot warmer than Britain right now. Take off. Flaps five. Center of gravity is 25%, 4.67 on the trim. And there we go. We're now 147 on the map. So we'll put that in, 147. And then we'll add our departure course, which is 247. So I've got to put 247 for our heading. This is our initial heading. Remember, we're told to climb out on runway heading to 11,000 feet until they tell us different. And we have to put it in all three spots. And up here, I need to put in our cruise altitude of 35,000 feet. This is for pressurization. We're leaving the landing altitude at zero because the elevation of the runway is only 11 feet. Right, our passengers, or as a friend of mine said, the self-loading cargo has already come on board. So we're closing the hatch and bringing up the stairs. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to test this flight plan. Good, I've got two green lights, so I will arm that and the VOR. And while we're here, I'm going to set the barometer pressure. I'm also going to put in the barometric pressure for our minimums at our, our decision height at Bali, which is 370 feet. And we have that in. Okay. Right. Switching to RTO on that. We are looking good. Right. Everybody's on. So now we're ready to ask the nice people on the ground to give us a pushback so that we can start the engines. So go to menu, FS actions, do a pushback. And we're going to do a standard straight out, no turns, and we'll select the tug and now, if we're all ready, all buckled up, just do a quick check before start. Fuel is correct. Windows locked. Both seatbelt signs are on. Check. Door lights are out. MCP, the headings are all in. 
Takeoff thrust is assumed good. CDU pre-flight is correct. Rudder air alarm trim is free and zero. Taxi takeoff briefing is completed. Anti-collision light is now on. So we're ready to do a start and ask the people to give us a pushback. So, push start. We've been cleared for pushback and start tail straight out. Roger that. We're ready for push straight back. Release the brakes, please. Releasing the brakes. Brakes released. Now we'll turn off the air conditioning and I'm going to start engine number one today, so I'm switching to generator one. Brakes here we go. Okay, we're starting to move, so I'm switched. The engine start switch to ground start. The start valve has opened. And the N2 is climbing. EGT is going up. When this gets to 24, we'll put in the fuel. There's 24. In a moment, we should start to hear the engine start up. There's the EGT climbing quite rapidly, as it's supposed to. It's catching. Low pressure light has gone out. That looks good. We're at 40. Ah, there's the engines. They've started. That's good. Looking up here for 115 volts, and there's 115, so switching now to engine number two. Engine number two is on, start valve has opened, the EGT has built up, the N2 will wait until that reaches 24, then we'll introduce the fuel. Parking brake is set. There's 24, putting in the fuel. Now the EGT, the engine gas temperature, is climbing quite handsomely. Roger, Dodger. And there it is, the oil pressure light has gone out to indicate that we have good oil pressure. Everything is looking good. And we're looking, we have ignition. We're looking now for 115 volts, which we have. So now we're going to switch to the main engines for our electricity. Turn on the air conditioning again. Turn off the APU bleed. Turn off the APU. We're now running on the air conditioning from the main engine. We are looking good. So, attendance, please make sure that all the champagne glasses are filled. We have a little bit of a taxi to get to the end of the runway. So, I'm going to flaps five. I'm now going to verify the takeoff speeds. And it says to go to 148 on that, so we'll do that. Turn on the runway taxi lights. And all right, I think we are set to go. And we're going to go out here, turn right, and go to the end of the runway. So, break off. And give a little bit of power to get unstuck and then gently turn the tiller and I've got to watch out for kamikazes they're everywhere here well we're looking good And the 
taxiway looks clear. We're looking fine. So here we go. Straight down this taxiway. Somebody out there already. It's kamikazes. The kamikazes. Why do they make me a target? Look at him. He's coming straight at me. Get out of it. Go on. Buzz off. I'm bigger than you, you twerp. Wow, look at that. Totally ignored me. Kamikazes, all of them. Oh well. And there's the lovely sign identifying this as Sukarno Hatta International Airport in Jakarta. This is a very detailed airport scenery. Very detailed. It was certainly worth the money. Binasim is the designer, so those people at Binasim, they did a good job. It's a large airport too. Ah, now my frame rate has gone up to 41, 42. And look at the weather outside. It is muggy. You know, this will be very, very humid here today just as well that we have the air conditioning on in here. Plenty of stands there at the international section. Well, I don't know if we're going to have A lot of aircraft coming in or out of the ground. Pacifica 8087 with Romeo ready to taxi IFR. Oh, there's somebody out there. Taxi to an all short of runway 25 right using taxiway. No member of part one. No member Charlie Mike. No member Mike. No member of part two. No member of part one. No member of part two. No member Charlie one. No member of part contact tower on 118.2 when ready. That was a mouthful. Taxi to an old short runway two five right using taxiway November Papa one November Charlie nine November nine November Papa two November Papa one November Papa two November Charlie one November one Pacific eight zero eight seven. Now we're coming up on NC two, and we go to the one be beyond it to NC one. Then we'll make our left turn to join the active runway. This is NC2. So this one is ours. So I'll need to slow up a little bit here to apply a little break. And now I'm going to go on to the tower frequency to get our clearance. over the whole short line and then stop and ask the tower for clearance. Sokano Hatta Tower, right at 186, ready for IFR departure, runway 25 right. Right at 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 25 right. Ah, okay, we are cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, runway 25 right. There is an right. aircraft right coming in. But it's coming in, I believe, on 24, runway 24, so we're fine. So, all lights on. And 
Takeoff briefing is correct. Engine bleeds are on. Control switches are set to continuous. Attendance secure for takeoff. And there he is. He's landed on runway 24 right. So we are all set to depart here. into position and there we are right on the on the line so advance power to N1 we have good power toga button is pushed and we're rolling. A little bit of a crosswind here. V1 rotate. V1 rotates. V2. V2.
there is a restriction on the departure, we, we must hold at 8,000 feet until we get past Nanto. And then we can climb. So we are holding at 8,000 feet. Noise reduction is in force.
me. So let's see how we do, shall we? We're coming up on 30 miles in a moment. The line there says that we're very close. And as soon as we're close, then we're able to contact ground and ask them permission or clearance to come in to land.
point of entry into the final. Then we're going to need to make sure that we are at all the appropriate altitudes going down. So at CD09, which is the waypoint after that, we need to be 2,650, if you remember. All right, we're now turning on to the final. And the airport is out over there somewhere. So now going to 88 on the heading. Now let's see if I can do this without messing things up. So, going to continuous. Attendance, prepare for landing. And engine start switches, continuous, check. Altimeters, check. Nav aids are all set, check. Flaps 
are down, green lights, lights are on, check. We have the runway directly ahead. Minimums. minimums, check. We are Forward. committed to land. Minimums. Minimums. And we are good on the slope. 800. 800. Got birds in the area. Two, Look at that. And coming in. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty. And flare out. Nose down. Reverse thrusters on. Try to see if we can make the next gate. Okay, reverse thrusters off. This is the N3 exit. Starting the APU. All right, we have cleared the runway. Right, we are clean up is complete. Crew is released to go to work. Right, give it a little boost and we'll go over there and look for a stand. This is freeware this scenery. Look at how good this is. This is really a delight. Delightful scenery. Much better than I actually thought it would be. Not bad for freeware. This is going to be interesting because I don't know which gate now to use because they've got different markings on their gates here. I'm just going to go down here to uh, so I can get a closer look. That's gate 15, 14. None of these actually match the um, airport scenery. Not with the real life stands anyway. So we'll just pick one. about that one over there. Does that one look all right? Number 12? Shall we go into number 12? Yeah, why not? And there's some bloke out there waiting, so I suppose that's always good. And here's the line.
now just coast in. Engines are off, lights are off, burst and seat belts, stairs, doors are opening, APU is on there. Right, we'll start to do the shutdown. And Lights off, TCAS is off, everything is clear across here, clear across there. All right, shutting down the IRS and galley off. Good, okay, yes, I. Passengers are now going off into the area there. Right. Turning off the fuel pumps and the APU and finally the battery. Right, we have made it. We are now in Bali. This is great. This is lovely scenery. I don't know if you can really appreciate this, but for free wear, this is damn good, damn good. So, we made the flight, the approach wasn't bad, straight in. I did go a little bit below to get all the red lights on the, on the Vasi, but recovered. And uh, smooth enough landing. And we'll chalk that up as a win. <laughs> So, Wiga Wicketsono, I hope that you um, liked our flight today and that we did it proud and that we did it to your standards. And I hope everyone else will join us on the next flight of Ryanair 186.